Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a conch seashell. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it, but uh, we'll figure it out, I guess. <laughs> I'm going to show you step by step how to do it from start to finish. Got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's the man in chat today, so if you've got questions, you can ask them while I'm painting. Let's get started. All right, so I'm going to be using a nine by 12 inch canvas today. This is a Fredrickson mixed media canvas board. It's one of their newer products. I really like them, but they've got a nice hard core in there. So it's not like your paper ones that are gonna warp. Um, and I'm gonna be using a variety of different brushes from Princeton. I'm going to, I'm not gonna mention all of them cause I've got several, but you're basically going to want some that are, have some sort of a stiff bristle to do some some of the foam and then you're going to want some larger ones for our seascape in the background and then you're going to want something um, like a toothbrush to do some splattering so uh, and then some smaller detail brushes but we're gonna go over these when we use them is if we use them I just grabbed kind of a few that I thought we might need and if if I use it I'll mention it when I grab it all right um, you're also might be helpful to have a little sea sponge if you have one and then you're going to need some chalk or something like that to draw um, or some tracing paper or transfer paper to put your design onto your canvas. Let's go over our colors real quick. I've got burnt, burnt umber, burnt sienna, quinacridone, burnt orange, yellow oxide, cadmium yellow, medium uh, cobalt teal, thalo blue green shade, ultramarine blue, doxazine, I'm sorry, quinacridone magenta. And then this is unbleached titanium, titan buff, and... Uh, titanium white and zinc white and this is like glazing mediums it looks white but it's clear um when it dries i just put out both of the titan the unbleached titanium and the titan buff so you can see how similar they are um we'll we'll go ahead and just use them both but they can pretty much be used interchangeably the tight oh the unbleached titanium is a little bit more yellow paint all over my chalk um so yeah that'll be Sorry about that. Okay. So to start with, um, I went ahead and just kind of drew out very lightly, just kind of where my seashell is going to be so that I sort of know where to put my water. So you're just going to kind of want to do a diagonal line up. Now this is wet, so it's going to come out really dark. Um, diagonal line up, maybe a little bit from the bottom here and just kind of taper it up towards the halfway mark here. So it's going to go behind my seashell um, this is all my seashell here. It's going to kind of come almost straight across right here and then curve back up this way. And then this line is going to continue behind it. This is the surf line and kind of go like that somewhat. And then it's going to curve up this way. Now in our background, we've got like a little bit of a sand dune coming down here. It's very, very faint. So you can't really see it much and then our horizon line is somewhere in here that kind of intersects with it we've got some dark um probably hillside or something back there i'm not really sure um but it's all very blue and blendy so we're just going to leave it exactly like it is in our photograph i, I really like the kind of very soft background and then the conch shell right in right in front there hopefully i'm saying that right if I'm not, I'm sure somebody will let me know in comments. Um, all right, so, and then here's our surf line with the white right here, so it comes up. Our seashell is going to be right in the middle here. You can kind of just put your fingers together and figure out sort of where that's gonna be. I'm not really worried about that because we're gonna be painting over that whole thing and then we'll draw it back in later, but I just mainly wanted to know kind of where my sand and sea meet. All right, so that done, I'm going to wet down my brush. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and just put in the blue first and then we'll worry about the sand afterwards. So I'm gonna get some white. Pretty good amount of it because this background's pretty light. And then I'm gonna get just a tiny little bit of cadmium or um, phthalo blue. Look at how little that is and it just really tints it quite a bit. Um, so I think I'm gonna use this up in this background up here. And then as I come forward, I'm gonna add a little bit of my um, burnt sienna to darken it up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start with this way back here. 
And if you wanted a little bit more gray, you could add a little bit of burnt umber or something like that, or even a black if you have it out or gray. But I don't mind the baby blue up there. And then I'm gonna grab a little bit of the cobalt teal, just right in there where that hillside is. I'm just gonna kind of blend that into the background there a little bit, maybe a little bit darker. Now at the start of this video, I wanna make sure everybody knows that by law, you're only allowed to hang this painting in your bathroom. <laughs> So if you want to paint it, just be sure that you know that ahead you, of time. Right. You yeah. have space in your bathroom because it can't go anywhere else in the house. Can't go. What if you have a beach house, though? I think that that's, that's automatically okay. I don't know if they're exempt or not. <laughs> I'll have to look up the bylaws. Okay. <laughs> All right. So just going across like this, and I'm just going over the top of where that sand's going to be because I don't want to have to worry about that but I do want it to be very faded right here so I'm just kind of flicking it across so that that color is nice and faded right there and then let's go ahead and start to add a little bit of our um, darker blue so get a little bit more of the blue um, and a little bit of that this is the phthalo blue and then I'm getting a little bit of the burnt sienna that's gonna make a deep teal and depending on how much blue you add it'll be a little bit more blue there we go that's about right okay so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right in here I'm going again over the top of my surf and right up over my seashell but just keeping these brush strokes very light back and forth. And using the larger brush really helps. This is the two inch Aspen. I said I was gonna mention the brushes and I didn't tell you what I'm using here. Two inch Aspen um, from Princeton. Princeton's our brush sponsor, so thank you to them. And thank you to Fredericks. I didn't mention that they're our canvas sponsor, but they provide our canvases for our videos. And they don't pay us anything. We just get, we just like their stuff, so. <laughs> That's it. It's a win-win. All right. I'm going to wet this down. Brush that out. And then I'm going to grab some more white. Just white this time. And I'm going to just go over this wet paint. And I'm just going to kind of lift off some of that lighter, some of the blue, and add some lighter bits to it. Okay, I think that's good. Just want it to go a little bit light right here. What that'll do is give us a little bit of an illusion of distance. Okay, then I'm going to grab my, let's go ahead and use the, the flat here, the number 12 flat in the Summit series. I'm gonna set that aside. And while this paint is wet, I'm just going to go ahead and try to, we'll see if this works. If it doesn't, if it lifts, then we'll, I'll have to wait. But I'm going to get a little bit of this darker teal from down here and just add a little bit of that cobalt teal and try to go a little bit darker right in here. This color, this may be drying by now. So if it's dry already, that's fine. You can just get a little bit more of that sky color and blend it back out later okay I'm just adding a little bit more there and then I'm wiping my brush clean and I'm just going to use that very dry brush just to kind of it's it's slightly damp just to kind of lightly blend back over that okay so that's good just very like faint and then get that white and go back up underneath with the white, make sure we've got a good amount of white. And really it's kind of a light blue, so let's get a little bit of blue with it. It's kind of like our sky color. It's not pure white. And I'm just going to kind of go back in here and do sort of zigzag 
I'm sort of doing these sort of cupped side to side, but just gently rocking. So I'm getting some light wave, wave looking brush strokes through that wet blue paint. Okay. get a little bit more of the darker darker teal fairly dark because these dark um, dark shadows are pretty dark in this water so I'm going to go right up underneath the, the light part and just add a shadow to these so see these light areas where I've got like right here I'm just going to go right up underneath it with a little bit of this darker blue and this is working because it's wet. I, that's what I like about this canvas. feels like, um, I, I don't know if it's true, but it just um, feels like it, I have just a little bit extra blending time. Um, and you could also add a little bit of the glazing medium to your paint to give you a little bit of working time. Now, if your paint is dry and it's just sticky and it's not doing anything, then you can just let it dry completely. You can still do this over the top of your dry paint it just you may need to add a little bit more of that um, lighter like medium blue first it just in this area or like around the areas that you're working so you may have to add a little bit of the medium blue then a little bit of your white and then a little bit of this color and you may have to do you know this section first and then this section and maybe not do all of them at the same time it's just up to you how fast you work with your painting um, so um, I'm moving pretty quickly here so I'm able to get these blended out before they're drying okay so that's good that's pretty much all we're going to do with our ocean and there's only really detail like right in here right kind of across from where that shell is going to be wipe that out and I think I'm going to go ahead and go back to this brush because it's nice and big and I can get a good amount covered quickly so for our sand it's very kind of pinkish. it's like got a little bit of a pink tone to it so I'm going to go ahead and start with the base of the unbleached titanium and I'm going to go ahead and just go over this blue area it's not going to hurt anything um, to have a little blue in this and then I'm going to pick up just the tiniest bit of pink this is the magenta this will really tint it quite a lot, so don't go too far into the pink here. I'm just gonna slowly adding this until it, well, see there, that was almost too much. That was too much. So slowly, slowly, and then too much. <laughs> Back off. Okay, so there we go. So there's kind of a nice, um, like, pink sand color. And then I'm going to add a little bit of the darker, um, just a tiny bit of the burnt umber, just to neutralize it a little bit so it's not so pink. So it's a little bit more brown just a little bit because I don't want to take away from the pink I just want to make it a little bit and I don't want it too too dark either so now when I thin this out like this it's really going to dry quickly so I'm just going to go ahead and spray this really well with some water really quickly and then that will that'll give me a little bit extra drying time while I'm working with this okay so I think that's going to be good so let's go ahead and this blue's dry so it's important to wait for that to dry. Um, it's actually not dry right there, so I'm gonna have to just kind of be careful not to get too much into there. Oh, I forgot to bring my blue over here. Darn it. All right, real quick, before this dries, I need to bring my blue all the way here because I, I just remembered that that's the that wave comes in right there. Forgot. Okay, so go all the way across that shell and into there. Okay, there we go. All right, I am going to use a smaller brush for just this little area right here because it's just going to be tight. And which brush is that? This is the number 12, flat, uh, bright. Number 12 bright, okay. Yeah, 12 bright, okay. I'm going to get a little bit of white. The white's just going to help it cover the blue. And I'm just going to bring it down over. And... I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the suds in here. So what I'm really wanting to do is just kind of blend these two together so that they kind of merge into a pretty color. 
I, w- I want it to be very faint. They, they're the same value, so um, they're just slightly tinted, you know, different colors. But they're, the values are the same, which will kind of merge them um, visually. And just go ahead and bring that out. So the, the beach comes out to almost the halfway mark here. But there's just a little bit of this blue that kind of seeps in this way. So I'm just going to kind of bring that blue down or that bring that beach down to right about there. Right about the halfway mark and stop. Somewhere in here. And then I'm just going to blend back and forth. Just want a soft edge up here. So if that's really obvious, which I feel like mine is a little bit obvious, I'm going to get a little bit of white. And I'm just going to go back over this top edge with the white. And that'll take off some of that intensity and blend it into that blue a little bit. Okay, see how that kind of erased that hard edge that we had going on there. And then I'm going to go back in with a little bit of the, a little bit more of that color, but there we go. So something like that. Um, and let's go ahead and mix these two together. So a little bit of the blue and a little bit of that beach color. And I'm just going to use it along the edge of the where they meet. Because there's kind of a shadow in the sand right there. So just blend those together. I add a little bit of more of my pink so that the shadow is a little bit purple. We got some questions coming in. Okay. When you got a moment. Sure. A uh, person would like to know that um, if they don't know that, or they, if they don't have a particular color, is there a color chart or something that they can use so they can see how they you know, relate to other colors? Um, I do have a color chart that I um, posted on my website, I believe. So um, it's, I'll show it to you here in a second. Okay. All right, so something like that. That looks pretty good, I think. Yeah, I have um, this color chart that I, I took a photograph. Of course, the colors are going to be different depending on your monitor and the device you're using. But um, And then I also have a blank one that you can print out yourself that you can um, fill in. So that's I believe it's available in my traceable section. And you can also go to my um, FAQ page. I'm not sure exactly where it's posted, but it's somewhere okay, on my I'll, website. I'll check it out and I'll see. Okay. All right. I'm going to grab some. Now I'm going to get some more of the darker color down here. Get some burnt umber. Just mixing it into the same color, but it kind of changes color as it gets closer to us. It gets a lot darker. So I'm going to go ahead and use the larger brush and just kind of lightly blend through here. And I'm trying not to cover all over all that blue, but this is all sand. And one question about mm -hmm. the brushes. Let me get a little bit of this magenta. And blue. Uh-huh. Uh, what is the difference between a flat and a bright? A uh, bright is just shorter bristles than the flat. So it's the same. They're both squared off brushes, but the flat's got longer bristles. Brights are a little bit easier to control some for beginners. So. Thank you. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, a little bit more of that magenta. Burnt umber and thala blue. I'm just going to use it for the sand up in here. Okay, so like right there, that was trying to dry, so it's just lifting instead of laying down new color. So I'm just going to have to let that dry completely before I add too much more to it. I'm going to grab a little bit of the glazy medium, though. All that's going to do is just help go over. Blend in this paint a little bit. Kind of thin. Okay, there we go. So I just want to transition between this color and that color just a little bit right there. And I'm probably just going to have to let it dry completely before I can do that because it's 
they dried pretty quick on me. But while we're waiting for it to dry, I can go ahead and use this sponge and sponge on some dark shadows in our sand. So I'm gonna get Burnt Umber and Ultramarine Blue, more Burnt Umber than Blue. And I'm just tapping it into these other sand colors that we've got going on here so that I've got multiple colors on here. And I'm just going to add it and stipple into our sand. This will just be the beginning of kind of a, you know, sandish texture. Uh, we'll, we'll be splattering and doing other things, but this will kind of give us a start. And little known fact that just moments after this picture was taken, the seashell was picked up by Sally for her home business. <laughs> and the photographer got wet because he was laying in the, on the beach flat mm. to take the photo. I was thinking about that when I was looking at it. I was like, yeah, he had to get, or who, he or she had to get flat on that beach to get this shot because it's completely down at the, at the angle of the shell I wonder if they placed it there oh, I'm sure they did I'm sure all right so there's our little thing there I'm gonna have to have you dry this for me before I can really do anything else so While he's doing that, I'm just going to clean out my brush just a little bit. And I'm not going to be able to clean it all the way, so I'm just going to set it off to the side um, full of water so that I can clean it later. So just get it pretty soaking wet and then just set it off to the side on a paper towel, but not so that the paper towel is absorbing all the moisture out of it. And clean them both out. And then this sponge is pretty, it's gonna really muck up my water, but uh, one thing about using sponges is you really don't want to have a lot of moisture in them. So when you get them damp, get them damp before you use it. So I didn't mention that, but you want it to be damp, but then really wring out all of that moisture in there um, so that you're using it fairly, it's not dry, but you know, it's, the the water kind of will if you have too much water in here as soon as you press down it'll flood your painting with water and you don't want that to happen so you want to get most of the moisture out of that and then just have um use it that way all right i'm going to wash off my hands quick yeah no most of this was all dry already so you're fine you're good okay so before I go any farther I think I'm going to go ahead and just draw in my shell and that way I'll kind of know if I need to do anything back here so my um, my water is going to come up here and then my shell is going to start, if this is my halfway mark right here. My halfway mark has the, is kind of the center of the, the shell. So it's like right in here. It's kind of a teardrop shape right there. And then make sure that you've got enough room. Yep, that's about right. So that the, the top part of it is going to come up right, right off center. So here's our center line here so right off center is the top part of our shell it's going to poke up right there and then from the mouth there's um, another line here that kind of zigzags in and out and comes like that and then there's these little spines that come out so there's one here one here i'm doing the center line of them so that i'm just spacing them out and then right here so i already kind of started that one maybe move this one up just a little bit 
All right, so this one's small. This one's a little bit thicker. This one's a little bit thicker. Kind of have that one in already. One here. And then the inside of them kind of V in and do the zigzag right there. Um, and then it kind of comes out at an angle a little bit more. So this last one is just inside just inside this one. So these all kind of make an arc about the same distance away. If that makes sense. So you've um, basically you've got three curved lines here. If you need to make a curved line here to just, you know, keep these spaced out. And then this middle one comes up and back out this way. It goes down to the mouth opening. The mouth opening has kind of this big pink part that comes in out the outside of it and then there's another little spike right here that comes up that's about the same height as this maybe a little bit taller than that so if you just kind of go straight across that's how tall you need to make it and then right from there is where the tip of the shell is so it's pointing out right there and from where this one comes down, if you follow that line down, out, and then get to the beach and kind of just come out like that. And the bottom of it starts just about where this surf hits the, hits, hits this midway right here. So there's some more sh part of the shell up in, under here, but we're not really seeing it because the water is coming up over it. So this is the water over it coming in a line. It's coming up to right about here. So right about where this last one comes down, it comes out. If you go straight down, that is where your water is hitting it. And then here's part of our inner part of the shell right there. And then the bottom of it in the sand right here comes up. This is all going to be really dark under here. I don't have it dark enough. So let me get my blue chalk so you can see what I'm doing. So it's going to come up, V down, back down, back there, kind of comes up and then back down like that. And then just does all these little zigzaggy crazy things. And that little area sweeps out right there. Okay. And that comes out fairly far, and then there's more of this shell right here coming out right there. Okay, so there's our shell, basically. So now we know what we need to do here. Uh, let's also go ahead and draw in our suds. So our suds are going to come all the way out to here and back down right in here. So we did a pretty good job of separating that out. And they're going to be all in here. Okay. So something like that. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is just kind of blend this out right here between these two colors. Whoops. And I let this dry while I was doing stuff. So I'm going to have to mix a little bit of this color back in. That was kind of that purple. So it was the burnt umber, quinacridone, and this color for the sand color right up in here. And then we added a little bit of the sand, the sea color for the blue, the ocean color with the phthalo blue. All right, so I'm gonna just, there we go. Boy, we got that almost spot on, how about that? Almost like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Surprised both of us. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a darker like shadow color. This is going to be our our color that's underneath our seashell. So I'm going to use phthalo blue and phthalo uh, or and ultramarine blue and my burnt umber. This will be black. So really dark. You could use black if you want to instead. It's up to you. But I kind of like having a little bit of a color. And then I'm going to use a little bit of the quinacridone burnt orange too. That might give it a slight purple tone. 
Okay. And you can add a little bit of white if you want to see what your undertone is. So that's an actually really nice, just basic gray. If I added a little bit more of that quinacridone burnt orange, see how it goes a little bit more to like a purpley red, reddish. If I wanted even more purple, I could add like the quinacridone magenta to it. But I'm going to add just a little bit more of that burnt orange. And then we're going to go up underneath our shell right here where we just drew. Really darken in all of this area right here on our sand. Which brush did you pick up? This is the, um, thank you, Six Filbert. Thank you for reminding me. I'm not used to mentioning it as a crab it, you know. I'm like, don't worry, I'll tell you, and then I don't. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to kind of go all along that line of that shell there, and then I'm going to really quickly... Grab some glazing medium, and I'm going to go at the bottom of this and blend this out because I don't want this to dry. I want it to give me time to blend out a shadow underneath this and to my sand here. And then I can grab some of my sand color and come back in the opposite direction. Blend that back in a little bit. But that'll just give me a good dark shadow. Go black. Like you want this really dark. If you don't have this dark enough, your your seashell will look like it's floating. Um, I checked the values um, with my little value finder on the reference photo before I started. It's always a good idea to have something like this to just kind of check yourself. And the darkest values were in this this range here with the black. And then the lightest values were up in here. So there really wasn't a whole lot of bright white, even though that the surface is um, white. Um, it's like it's actually kind of a blue and it's sort of in this range here. And then the inside of the shell um, which looks light is kind of a darker and the this area back here is actually kind of in this the this the C colors were all in this range here so it's helpful to do that before you start that way you kind of have an idea of how to how to target your dark colors because sometimes when you get going it's it's hard to kind of know what colors you're actually seeing or what values you're actually seeing not the colors but the values because you get you can get tripped up in the colors and then not realize your colors are not dark enough and really um, if you're going for realism you need to get your values right the colors aren't as important but for some reason we kind of focus more on the colors when we're doing stuff like this it's just kind of natural. Okay, so this sand has all kinds of colors in it. And I'm gonna go ahead and go over the top of it. If I need to, I can shadow again. Um, but I want to protect my C. I don't want my C to get any of this color on it. So I'm just gonna take a clean paper towel and just cover all of this that I don't want. And I'm gonna wrap it around so that it doesn't get on there. I'm gonna get another one do this side so the stippling doesn't really start until like right in here so that's I'm going to cover all of this upper part of it so that none of this gets any stipples and try not to wipe off my drawing while I'm at it um, and I do want to while I'm thinking about it just saw an area right in here that needs a little color so I'm going to get my magenta a little bit of the blue and I'm going to put in the sand to right there Get a little bit of the burnt umber and unbleached titanium as well but it's fairly dark so I'm gonna go with that and just make sure that this sand area back here is covered because that is going to be behind our shell so we don't want that to look like it's not covered okay so that's good all right so I'm gonna start with my lighter color I'm gonna get some unbleached titanium here and just run it through this brown that we've got um, pretty much I'm just gonna kind of grab all these colors that I've already got mixed up here and use all of them 
and I'm going to use my toothbrush. In fact, I'm going to do something really smart and Ooh. cover my hand with. <sighs> oh my my. With a glove. My <laughs> foot glove. <laughs> yeah. And that way, I won't get this paint all up under my thumbnail. All right. So, um, and the reason why I'm to using toothbrush is because it does finer. Um, dots than a um, fan brush or something like that. All right, so I'm going to hold it in my fist right up to the top so that I can get my thumb over the top edge of it. And I'm just gonna point it straight down the canvas here and just do all these little tiny bits of sand. And your thumb's gonna get tired after a while, but you're gonna want to do this a lot. So get a toothbrush that's not too stiff. <laughs> Uh, you've got a time. Okay, so if you have something like that that happens, just dab it off. It'll come right off. Okay. So while you're doing that, mm -hmm. you spurned several questions about value. Okay. And so, first of all, did you, I thought that you kind of went over value in a tutorial once. Mm, yeah, I've <clears throat> talked about it several times. Okay. And so it just seems like there's a little bit of confusion okay. about the difference between value and color okay. and tone. Okay. So. Value means light and dark. That's all it means. So it's just how dark or how light it's this. doesn't matter the color. It's just dark and light. That's it. Value finder. Grayscale value finder. So the values, um, you can, your darker colors, like... Um, some colors naturally are darker in value. So some colors like doxazine purple, a lot of your blues, like these ones, they're going to be in this value range. It has nothing to do with their actual color tone or, or, or under layer, uh, you know, hue, basically, um, is a totally different thing from value. Value is just how dark it is, how light it is, that's it. Um, and then the color... Um, will naturally fall in this scale. So your yellows are going to be in here. As you get over here, you're going to have oranges, reds, blues, greens, blues, purple there. And they fall in the value scale just because of that's their natural tendency is to be lighter. Yellows tend to be lighter. They catch, you know, right. they catch more light. Blues, purples, depending on if you add white to them, of course, a purple can be lighter too. It can be lighter in value if you add white to it. But if you leave it at its mass tone, it's just a base tone, um, base color, then it's going to be like a doxazine okay. purple is, is basically almost black. Okay, so light brown, dark brown, medium brown, those are all different values right, of, of the, the same, same color. hue. Right, okay. yes, yes. Yep. Thank you. That was a neat, better way of saying it. Good idea. Good. So when you're doing the, the camo paint pattern on your tank... You want different <laughs> values of the same colors. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Okay. There you go. We should do a tutorial on that. <laughs> um, it, it, I used it, it'll help everybody. Do a camo tank. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's all in art education, of course. Right, right. I'm grabbing some of that shadow color here. I still had a little bit of that quinacridomagen, our burnt orange in here, so it's kind of to to toning it down just a little bit a little lighter. Making it lighter. Did I say quinacridone magenta? I meant unbleached titanium. I think I said quinacridone magenta. I, I do that all the time. I mix those two up, which they have nothing to do with each other. They don't even look close to each other at all in they any way. They have different but, values and everything. Exactly. It's just, I don't know why I do that. Uh, my brain. That's how I must have stored them too close together in my brain box. <laughs> All right, so getting some of that or uh, quinacridone burnt orange and maybe a little bit of the burnt umber. Let's do kind of a reddish tint. There's every color of the sun in here just about in our sand. I'm just going to get all these fun colors in here. And it's getting all gummed up, so I'm just going to clean this out. My water. I, I think I'm going to have to have you rinse my water out, hon, if you don't mind, because it's... It's pretty gunky. Thank you. Wow, I just caught my tail over here. 
<laughs> you can get the puppy beds and the animals laying, laying everywhere in the studio. All right, let's get some white. I'm gonna add some white over here. I know I don't have my water, so I'm gonna just spray it. How's that? It's going to spray whatever direction you're pointing this tip to because you're going in the opposite direction. So um, it's going to fly out in the opposite direction that you're pulling it. So if I'm pulling it this way with my thumb, it's going to go that way. So I have to point my the point of my kind of turning my arm sideways to get the point of this faced down towards my canvas. It's a little bit awkward. And if you don't, if you hold it at an angle, what's going to happen is you're going to get these elliptical um, shaped instead of round circles. They're going to be kind of elongated shapes. And you can see the one, you know, sometimes I've done that. I've gotten, you know, my angle a little bit off and it'll create long dots instead of circular. Whoops. There, let's see. <laughs> I think I need you to clean my brush out too. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> One brush at a time. What would that cost me? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Couldn't we, resist. we can work out a payment plan. <laughs> Ultramarine blue here, and I'm mixing a little bit with the the quinacridone or the quinacridone burnt orange that I had going on there. Some water. Fitz Pickle heard there was kisses. He's coming over for some. He's like, I heard you were giving out kisses. I'm here for my kiss. Yeah. My other dog, the one before Scooter, if Mark kissed me, he would try to get it between us to block Mark. He didn't want, you know, him kissing me because he was jealous. Fitz Pickle wants to get in on the fun and he's like, <laughs> he wants everybody to kiss him. He, he wants to jump in there and get kisses too. So yeah, he's not fair, huh? He's a sweetheart. Okay. I am finding that that toothbrush is starting to get kind of soggy. It's just because I've used it on so many colors and the fibers are starting to get kind of soft. So I'm just going to switch to a fan brush here this, and just start to use this a little bit. And see, this is a lot bigger, so I'm going to have to be careful. Get, have not as much paint on here. There we go. So I've got a light blue here, and I can just dab off some of this too. But I want this really pretty blue color. This is ultramarine blue with a little bit of the unbleached titanium and a little bit of the um, quinac just a tiniest bit of quinacridone burnt orange, not a lot. Okay, and then I'm just going to use my paper towel and just kind of dab over this. So it's just kind of tinting it, but it's not. Not so obvious. Okay, I think we're pretty close to where I want to be on this sand. Uh, let me go a little bit darker. I'm going to get a little bit of this darker and add the blue to it. And use that more of a blue tone. I am getting, I can feel these hitting my arm, so I know I'm getting this all over myself. I'm probably going to find some in my eyebrows <laughs> later, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like. <laughs> I'm 
interesting choice of colors there. Okay. I never wear anything that I don't want to get paint on, so that's pretty a, pretty much a good rule of thumb because I'm super messy. So if you're like me, you better just develop a set of painting clothes that you grab. And a lot of my painting clothes are my when my clothes like when I get tired of stuff, you know, or like they're getting old, then I they shift over to the painting clothes <laughs> pile. Um, all right, let's get some of the unbleached or this is the Titan Buff. So it's, you can see, hopefully, on there, you know, it's just a little bit more of a lighter tone, a little bit maybe slightly more gray or just less yellow. Um, and I've got this area right in here. Now, that's coming off kind of thick, so that just means that this is still too thick on here. It's, I just need more water. It's got to be kind of a milk consistency. All right, so it's thinned out really well. I'm gonna take off a little bit of extra just so, it, there we go. Ooh. So you can see why we put the paper towel down because you can see how much has gotten on the paper towel that would have been on our water and stuff we don't want, where we don't want it. Okay, so there, and then these big splatters I don't want on here, so I'm just gonna dab those off. All right, but I'm pretty happy with that, I think. I'm just gonna go ahead and dab off like that. Okay, let's move this off and see what we've got. Okay, very nice, and I've got a nice sand going on. We'll probably um, shade out this bottom area once this is completely dry, but we can't do it right now, obviously, because our, our little dots are still really wet. <laughs> Try to get most of this off because if I touch this onto my canvas anywhere, especially on this guy or somewhere that's dry, it'll um, it'll mark it up. So it'll come right off my hand and stick to that canvas. So this picture has a very shallow depth of view here. Yeah, it does. Man. Yeah, the only thing that's in focus is this. Yeah, I didn't notice that at first. Mm -hmm. You yep. you art person making me see it. <laughs> Well, good. Now I can't unsee it. Right. All right, so while that's drying, let's go ahead and do the sea foam that's back here. Now, I'm, like I said, it's it's not white. It's, it's actually kind of a light blue. Um, so I'm gonna use a little bit of both of these two blues, the ultramarine blue and the um, quinacridone magenta. I'm actually going to go ahead and use this right here where I had the quinacridone magenta before. It's very soupy, but I don't think it'll, I think it'll be all right. All right, so I'm going to mix in that white. So this is a darker tone. I'm going to start with the kind of medium value and put that in and then we'll go we'll go over it with our lighter colors. But mainly I just want to kind of fade out around that area between the sand and I'm just doing these circular brush strokes. I've switched to my Willows Blender or this is now now they're just called blenders, three eighths inch size. And I'm just gonna do these circular motion brush strokes, blend in over the top just to kind of create a soft fuzz, because this is all out of focus still, so I don't want anything too hard. No hard lines here. That's how you make things look out of focus and blendy and blurred, is just by softening the lines. You don't want any, any, and when I say hard lines, I just mean like one color right up next to the other color with an obvious change in tone or, um, or value or whatever. Um, and if you if you have two colors that are meeting, then you just blur this area in between them to the them so that it's soft. And that's what I'm doing by doing this. So I'm just kind of blending with my brush and softening up that color right there. Okay, then I'm going to get some of my white. I'm just gonna leave this blue in my brush 
it's going to mix with this white as I work with it. In fact, I think I'm going to get the zinc white. What the zinc white's going to do is going to be more transparent. So it'll go over the top, but it'll be a little softer than my titanium white would be. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing, going over the top of this blue. That's my dog. You sad? He wants to go out. Yeah, he wants to go hang out with Spencer. I'm not trying to make this look like waves or anything like that because you can't see that in the photograph you're just seeing like a just a slight change of color here this is this area up here is a little bit lighter so i'm gonna get a little bit more white and do that area a little bit lighter it's catching the sun on top of that foam i'm gonna go in well into my my shell here so that i don't have any gaps that i have to fill in later that's that's no fun if you miss an area and then you have to go back in and try to match a color later. It's not no bueno. So just go over the top of your drawing a little bit. Okay, so I think that that's good. I think uh, that still it looks blurry. It it looks um, it looks about what I want it to look. I might go a little bit brighter with it, but I'm probably going to have to let it dry because I've got like two layers of paint already on here. And um, I don't know if I add, let me try to add a third layer, but yeah, it's just going to pull off the under layers if it's not dry. So they're, they're not dry yet. So let's just go ahead and do this area down here. So I'm going to get this darker blue. It's close to our, our color of our water up here. It's got the ultramarine blue, just makes it a little bit more on the purple side slightly. I'm going to even get a little bit of the dark, dark color because it's shadowed right here where it's where it's hitting the sand so I'm just gonna use that use that shadow blue this is the this is that shadow color that we mixed up that had the both blues and the and the burnt umber but then this one had a little bit more of just the ultramarine blue mixed in so that's what that is I'm going to lay the color down, wipe my brush out, and then just kind of smush it around and blend it in so that it doesn't look too obvious. Okay, so there we go. And then we can put our blue on top, our wave color. So this is the lighter version of it. And really, we're going to have to come back and do some of this later because um, this is going over the top of our seashells. So um, I'll put a little bit of it in right now, but really we're going to have to do this part where it's meeting the seashell after we put the seashell in because we won't be able to get it in here exactly fine, you know, finished until then we don't have anything to put on top of it or put it on top of I should say okay so I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of work that in and blend out that dark color there and then I'm gonna get the zinc white tap on the zinc white wipe my brush out and just kind of blend out the edges of it soften it up but I just want I don't want to blend it out so much that I can't see that it's brighter so just kind of blending it out a little bit leaving a few little dark spots in it but again this is pretty pretty blurry in our photograph it's the only thing like Mark was saying is that's really in focus is this area right here so that's good enough. I'm going to go ahead and get some of my unbleached titanium. This is dry now. I'm going to get some glazing medium. 
a little bit of, well, this is the Titan buff, but it doesn't really matter. Just my lighter, lighter sand color here. And I'm just going to kind of go over the top and kind of add a haze to this area that's just be beneath. There's a little bit of highlight on the sand right there. Actually, I don't know if I like that. I didn't even take that off because I do, I do want to leave the dark areas. So. Just when you do your splattering, just splatter a little bit more of your light color right in here. I might just do that with my brush because I don't want to leave my lose my dark. I might just tap it. That'll, that'll do a little bit better. Instead of glazing it light, I'll just tap a little bit of the highlight color right there. Let's get our seashell going. So we've an hour into it and we've not touched our seashell, but we've got most of our background done, so that's good. All right, let's go ahead and I'm gonna do the inside of the seashell with this um, uh, magenta and burnt orange color. That's gonna be the color that we're gonna use um, in our area like this color here that had the unbleached titanium. That's really going to be a lot of this color that's on the inside of the seashell here. So go ahead and grab that unbleached titanium or Titan buff, either one. And I'm going to add just the slightest bit of blue, a little bit of ultramarine blue. And that'll make it a little bit more purple-ish. And then I'm going to use quite a bit of the Titan buff and just do the inside. Now this is probably a little bit dark, but I can see in my photograph, the inside of the seashell was this tone, this value here. So I can go maybe a little bit lighter. I'm kind of closer to this. So I'm gonna go a little bit lighter with this, get a little bit of white, just mix it. Because this will dry darker too, so I don't want to start out with a color that's too dark. Because then by the time it dries, it'll be much too dark. That'll be a good place to start here. Just kind of, I'll probably need a couple coats here, so I'll just go ahead and start there. And it's I'm going a little bit pinker than it is in the reference photo, and that's just personal preference. So you know, artistic license here. I just like a pink shell so um that's just my my own choice you can do whatever if you want yours to be a little bit more gray you can just you know add a little bit of brown to it or a little bit of blue it's up to you but i just decided i wanted mine a little bit pink inside okay i just like the combo of those two colors kind of the nail my nail color no, it, I'm a natural. That's what it's called. OPI. I'm a natural. Um, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and go around the outside of this. Add my darker. And it's really more orange than this. So I'm going to get a little bit of tiny bit of the yellow. Tiny, tiny. Maybe even unbleached or the yellow oxide. I wasn't sure if I needed the cadmium yellow or the yellow oxide, so I'm just going to use a little bit of both and make, yeah, there we go. We're making an orange for our seashell parts. Oh, that's beautiful right there. Add a little bit of this magenta color. That's it. Okay. So this is the color right there. Pretty. And I'm just going to go ahead and use it kind of on the outside of this. And this is all kind of very blendy, so it kind of changes tone really quickly. It's got all kinds of different um, value shifts. So I've got some lighter color on either side, and it it doesn't 
like blend in it kind of blends into this middle part like there's not a like not a lip that you can really see that's defined it kind of just blends one color into another here when it goes from this middle to the outside edges a little bit of the lighter color maybe a little bit of the pink and bleached titanium blend between the inside and this outside rim that's got the orange parts and let's go ahead and kind of put the center ribs in Now right here you do see kind of the separation because that's in front. This we're seeing kind of the inside of it. So we're seeing the this open mouth here. But here this is this is farther away. This part's farther away than this. This is overlapping it. You're seeing the inner. A little bit for a little bit more solid line right here is all I'm saying. I'm keeping this fairly loose just because I want it to be a little bit more impressionistic style. Style. So by using a little bit bigger brush, and um, I can I I like force myself to kind of stay looser with my brush strokes. If I had a smaller brush, I could get a little bit more fussy with my brush strokes, but I don't want that. So this is the unbleached or the burnt quinacridone burnt orange here. I'm just going back in and adding a little bit darker to that. And I probably will go to a little bit smaller brush eventually, but for now, this is working. So I'm just going to keep on going with it. Get my unbleached titanium here. I'm gonna wipe my brush off now. And then these outer areas are, I'm gonna get a little bit of my yellow oxide. I'm gonna have to clean off the space to work because I have no place to mix in my new colors. I got a lot of, a lot of soupy colors here from when I did my splattering so I need to be careful so while you do that I will mm -hmm. mention patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art where all the cool kids go <laughs> to get traceables bonus videos all kinds of fun stuff yeah so check it out we just put up our schedule of oh I just scraped off all the color I was just using um, we just put up our schedule of videos for February so if you want to check those out um my community tab here on YouTube has those. Um, also posted them on Instagram and Facebook and all the other usual suspects, so usual places. But we've got some fun stuff coming up, and our bonus video for February is going to be a lion, mama, and her cub. So nice. Fun, fun one. Black and white series. Yep. Yep, the black and white mama and baby series. We can continue. We've done an elephant. We've done... Um, giraffe, we've done polar bear, polar bear, yep. And we did a llama, but it was a little bit more yellow, but still, you could do it in the same colors. We did, um, well, we did two horses, so you could kind of pretend like one is a baby. We did two white horses in the black and white animal series, so you could pretend one of them the baby, um, or make it a little smaller, maybe. Um, but yeah. We've got all kinds of fun stuff in there, so. And uh, the traceable for this one's already up, so you can find that on my patreon.com Patreon. slash Angela Fine Art. There we go. 
right. back to your regularly scheduled program. All right, get in some of that unbleached titanium. So this is kind of our base color for our shell. And we're definitely going to add a lot of white to it, which it, it probably, probably we could just use the unbleached titanium on its own or the Titan buff on its own for the un undertone of our shell because it's pretty close. I got brush in my teeth. So. Okay, here we go. All right, so I'm going to switch to a little bit smaller brush because I'm going to smaller little areas. So I'm going to get the quarter inch blender and get a little bit of the, both of the unbleached titanium and the, or Titan buff in the white here. And then I'm going to just use this color right here to blend in. It's got yellow oxide and a little bit of this uh, quinacridone burnt orange brown color from our sand so and then this is the blue color from our surf right here so i'm going to use a little bit of that blue color too here on the inside of my seashell so now that this seashell is dry i'm going to take this blue and just put it in here and get a little bit of that quinacridone. A little bit more blue. Just want to be able to just barely see that it's blue. There we go. I'm going to put it right in here, just on the inside. Just to slightly darken up that area right there. With a little bit of blue. There we go. Just a hint of blue. And then use this lighter color. And just kind of dry brush right in here to highlight the inside of this. Okay, get a little bit more. is that yellowish white color here. I might go even a little bit more yellow with it. Just the tiniest bit of cadmium yellow. And I mean tiny, tiny, tiny. I don't want it to look yellow. But that, yeah, look how pretty that is. That's going to brighten that up. Okay, so I need to mix some more of that <laughs> pink though because I... <laughs> gotten rid of all of it. So that was the quinacridone magenta and burnt orange and burnt umber with unbleached titanium. It's going to be a little bit different. I also added a little bit of blue to make it a little bit more purplish. So that's pretty close to what we had. So I can use that with my white. Yeah, that's pretty close. And add a little bit more of the orange. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna use my light color here. I've got my yellow tones. It's my pink tones. Just gonna kind of mix those two together. And right here where they meet, where that pink meets the yellow. I'm just kind of blend those two together a little bit. Okay. Just blend in, get 
little bit more of the yellow with my pink here and make a peachy, peachy color. Now, when you're done with this painting, mm -hmm. of, of course, wait till it's dry, mm -hmm. but put your ear up to it and you probably can hear the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> that work for paintings too? Uh, I don't know. We'd have to try it. <laughs> Oops. Oh, what did I just do? I have no clue. Wow. So we'll edit that out in post. Yeah. I grabbed a... I must have just brushed through that a little bit. You were thinking about listening to your painting, I bet. I was. I was thinking about how my mom brought back a conch shell from when they went to one of the, I don't know, they went on vacation somewhere, and I, I, that's the first thing I did. <laughs> Put it up to my ear. <laughs> I still have it in our bathroom there. Like I said. <laughs> the boys' bathroom, but yeah. I don't think we have it on display anymore, but we had it for years. We had it out. Okay, so I'm going to use this lighter color here to put in our... And I'm going to use the darker version of it here for some of the shadows. I'm going to go ahead and spray everything just a little bit to give me some time. So this was the version that had a little bit of the um, yellow... Uh, oxide in it so I've mixed so many colors here I don't remember exactly what's in each one so when you're watching if you're going to be painting along I would say take a screenshot when I mix a new color um, because I'm probably going to be using all of these colors again and maybe even mixing other colors into them so and I don't really remember exactly what's what um, at this point because I've, I've just gone to too many too many paint too many different colors to keep track of so, getting some blue, a little bit of the pink, kind of purple color, go down here. This is the inside of that tail of it. I'm going to get a little bit of the glaze and do just like right here, right at the heart of the deepest part of it, right here. It goes down into the nose. Just get a little bit of that darker color right there. Deep in the heart. And I've got both of these both of these paintbrushes loaded with paint here. I'm kind of working back and forth. That one's already dried out. Okay, getting some of the pink. And right here where it opens up to these spines, that's each little one of those has like a little white area right here. Stick it up. So just finding those. I'm just kind of blending out the bottoms of them. titanium or titan buff and like white and go ahead and make that outer part of my shells go ahead and paint that in it actually comes down more like that Okay. 
Okay, so if you can't see it against that blue sky, we just need to make the value different. So I'm going to brighten it up with some more white. So you can see it. Against the sky. And so that's your blender brush? Mm-hmm. Yeah, in fact, this is really out here a little bit more. Get my yellow. side of this has actually got a little bit of blue probably reflection from the sun blue or um, white is one of those colors that will pick up reflections from whatever's around it so you've got this seashell where it's catching some light from the sun and, or sky it's gonna have a little bit of blue tint to it some places. I lost all my orange too. than that, but we'll get there.
Am I the only one that's getting sleepy? (laughs) (laughs) You just play the ocean sounds in the background, sticking out right right here. Your voice, your breathing, (laughs) my headphones, just like, "Mm, yeah, I could sleep. So it it was a big week this week for my truck. Mm-hmm. I uh, put gas in it for the second time. <laughs> How long have you had this truck? Uh, seven months. <laughs> we 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 passed the. And you needed it? Why? The the thousand mile barrier. Okay, I, I we needed it. Yeah. I'm turning your microphone off. <laughs> it's not working right now. <laughs> It got dirty. Right. And when I went to pick up the uh, the compost, mm-hmm. part of the road that the place is on was flooded. Uh-oh. And uh, I wish I had a camera crew with me so they could video me going through the water, you know, just the water splashing up everywhere. Were, it was like in heaven. It was epic. Yeah. It's like the commercial for trucks. Yep. <clears throat> and then I, then I went off-roading. Mm-hmm. I had to back into the into the yard to offload the dirt. So. <laughs> off-roading in our yard. I don't think that counts. It, it was off-road. It was on the grass okay. in the yard. Okay. All right. So, you know, my man card was punched a few times this week. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you finally got to use your new truck. <laughs> new. Relatively new. What point does it no longer become your new truck? How long do you have to have it before it's your, just your truck? Well, I think now it's just my truck. Just your truck. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Using some of the brown here, just add a little bit of shadow. It goes a little bit dark as it comes around the corner here. Yellow oxide and burnt orange here. Tiny bit of magenta. Maybe use some burnt sienna just to tone it down a little bit. Okay, I think that's pretty close to what I want for my inside of my shell. I think this color is a little bit too And by the inside, I just mean these bright orange bits. Might even get a little bit of yellow. Use those for the highlighting. Yeah, that's better. Just a little bit more. I'm using some white now with mixed with it. Just kind of blend it out. And again, I'm keeping this whole thing kind of very dreamy and blurry. It's just kind of like the whole background. I just think it'll fit, you know, just having the whole thing kind of be that soft colors and soft blends between colors. And this actually needs to be moved up. This is pretty light. basically just editing and you know don't be afraid of editing like this as I, this is actually how I normally paint <laughs> I don't normally paint draw in a really hard defined 
Like, this is what, what I do when I'm just doing it for my own pleasure and not teaching it, because I like the look of the multiple layers that happen when you paint over an area again and again. That's just my preference. So I don't normally do that when I'm teaching because it can be confusing for students, so sorry. Um, I know I'm painting over areas and then moving them, but um, I, I like that look. So, you know, that it gives you this really um, soft, blendy thing that you can't get any other way. Um, lots of layers upon layers, and you get these little peaks of colors that, you know, um, from places that you don't expect them to be. So you get a little bit of pink here, just adding a little bit of that back in. And just kind of editing that whole area right there by the opening. Getting a little bit of the softer pink. I still have the yellow on my brush, so they're all, all these colors are kind of interplaying. So I'm just using a little bit of all of these just and really you can interchange the colors um, like we said you know before it's more the values that are more important than um, the color exact color so I mean you could do this whole shell in blue or you know another color that's totally different from what we're using here and it would still look like a shell because if you get the values right and you get you know the shapes right and uh, forms right um, your eye will still recognize it as a shell and that's why you see some artists that you know do all kinds of really fun and funky um, colors in their artwork and the way the reason it works is because they're still using the right values they're still getting you know doing the values right they're just playing with the colors and you know putting in whatever colors they want and using the you know, warmer colors on top here where they're catching the light and using the cooler colors down in here. So maybe, you know, if you were doing a blue, you would use um, a blue, like a phthalo blue green that's a little bit more on the warm side up at the top and then use a phthalo blue or ultramarine blue purple at the bottom where you're going to get more of a shadow, like more of a purpley color, cooler color. So um, that's just neither here nor there, but talking about what I'm doing here because I know I'm kind of editing and moving the colors around a lot adding a little bit of white to this part that's sticking up right there on this shell trying to get some brighter white at the tip of that it's sticking out same thing up here let's go ahead and add a little bit brighter white up here where it's catching the light. Okay, somebody just asked, can you use CAD yellow light? So I hope you know what they're referring to. Yeah, you can use CAD yellow light in, in here instead of the CAD yellow medium. Okay, good, because I wasn't paying attention to anything you were saying. <laughs> I was trying to remember what your nail color was. I know you told it's us. It's a natural. It's a natural. Mm -hmm. Thank you. A little bit of the blue for this underside of this shell right here. And it's gonna it's kind of disappears into the background because that blue is also in the water, so you kinda have to just play with that and see if you can get it to stand out enough. Somebody wants to go outside and play, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah probably telling Spencer it's time to stop on the computer, go outside, take the puppy outside. Okay. Just gonna set this aside. Now all these paint brushes that have been sitting out here for a while, I'm just gonna dip them back in the water. You see, I want them to dry out. Same thing with my little sponge there. Brush, fan brush. That's what I'm still working on, but okay. I like it so far. I still think that I am. I think I went a little bit maybe too low on this part. I think I might need to bring that up a little bit. Although maybe not. I don't know. I might need to bring this down somewhat. 
I don't know. We'll see. I'll keep going here. But like I said, I, I really like, I do, I do this um, with my, my own, when I was doing gallery paintings and stuff, you know, I'm selling them, um, which I do have paintings for sale now on Etsy, but they're the ones that we do here in the shows. Um, but they, uh, and we just, speaking of Etsy, we just added a bunch of the new paintings to it, so... There's a link down in the description for the Etsy store if you're interested. Um, back to my story, <clears throat> but I do, I did, um, I did a lot of my paintings this way. I like, I just like to kind of play around with the uh, the drawing as I go, draw it basically as I paint it, and so just kind of edit, get it, you know, get the get the initial drawing as close, you know, as I can close-ish to what I want it to be going a little bit more yellow here with this um, but then you know just using the using the brush to kind of move things around and push once I get the paint down here on the canvas then I can see you know I want to move that over just a little bit or whatever um, use a little bit of yellow with my white here Really bright, just yellow, white. I still had this other color in my brush, so it's mixing a little bit with the orangey tone. I'm going a little bit thicker with my paint, too, than I normally do. Just because I want that kind of more painterly, thicker brush strokes. Just taking my time. I think I will move this up just a little bit, cut this off a little bit, push this. I feel like I still need a little bit more room down here for some of this shell is down here. It kind of comes out, this shell comes out this way, and then as it turns, it goes this way. So there's these lines. Let's go ahead and get a little bit of the burnt umber. There's these lines that come through it this way. And then turn. It's not that dark over here, but just getting the idea. And then right here, there's a part that's sticking out that comes down. Another part right here that sticks out a little bit. All right, and then it fans out this way. So let's go ahead and grab some of this lighter color. I know I'm switching around here, but I'm just kind of doing parts that I'm seeing as I get to them. So this light white right here all the way up on that part sticks out. Let's get this yellow white here for this part. I'm going to push this out a little bit. Here we go. 
know if you like this style of painting. I really do. I, I mean, I don't paint this way very often, but I really like this kind of looser style of painting. So if you want to see more paintings like this, let me know in the comments and I'll try. I don't, I don't often find ones that work, you know, um, work in this style for me. I just, you know, I tend to kind of go more realistic and literal with my or more fussy, really, with my brush strokes and stuff, and find you know use smaller brushes. But using a brush like this on a on a painting like this, you just you can't get you can't get straight lines, and that's what gives you this look. If you if you were to use a brush like this um, on this instead, you can see how much finer I can get on my you know my lines can be very very thin. Um, and I wouldn't get these kind of messy edges. So if you like this kind of messy edged look, looser brush strokes and things like that, then use a brush that's, you know, that's messier. That's not going to let you get too fussy with your brush strokes. And that's, this brush works great for that. So. I'm using a little bit lighter color here for the inside. Remember, we've got these light areas that come up just where these come up there. So just marking those out. We had several yeses. Yes, they like this style? Okay, good. Good. Me too. Me too. I'm glad you guys are liking this. It's fun to paint this way. It's a little bit more so. random in, you know, so it's harder to teach it because it's kind of like, okay, I did a little dot there and now I'm going to move over here and do another little dot. And, you know, it's like it's not as structured, so it's it's harder to teach. So that's part of the reason why I don't do it this way very often because I kind of, you know, it's kind of harder to probably follow along with in some ways. But you'll develop what you'll find, though, I think, hopefully, if you try this, is you'll develop your own style of you know of working this way and your brush strokes will look different than mine and and uh, you'll get kind of a whole different look to yours and but that's great because it's you know it's your style so you're you're developing your own way of doing it you're holding your brush differently than me and you're you know maybe pressing down a little bit differently or you know getting different colors here and there so just I would say, you know, embrace that in the imperfectness of the the process if you're going to, you know, paint it this way. And don't worry too much about it looking like mine. How's it going, hon? Good. Are you looking at your watch? No, I wasn't looking at my oh, watch. Oh, okay. Wow. I, well, no, I was looking out the side corner of my eye. It looked like you were looking, mm -hmm. looking at your watch. No. Okay, good. No, I wasn't. Good. I was thinking it's the same with cooking. Uh-huh. You know, we were, I was watching a video last night, and they said uh, with cooking, it's it is important for you to understand and know the fundamentals mm -hmm. of cooking but then right. after that it's a free-for-all right it's your own taste, taste and mm -hmm. style and mm -hmm. it's you know a little bit more of this and a little less of that and and you know whatever and so right it's the same thing with painting you know there are some basic fundamental you know skills to learn but right. once you do that then it's it's whatever you want it to be exactly yep yep Right. If you get your, you know, if you get your values and things right, like we were talking about before, you can pretty much do whatever you want with it, you know. All right. So I'm going to lighten this up just a little bit on this inside. So I've got my yellow and a little bit of the glaze and I'm just going to go back over this again. It just, it almost like absorbed the background color a little bit. So I'm just going to use my finger to kind of blend it out slightly. But because this is cadmium, I'm going to wash my hand really good. Uh, I probably should have used a glove. So that was a number four ring finger? Or, no, that was the, <laughs> ooh, ooh, that was the number three middle finger. Yes. 
Don't show me that one, please. <laughs> Those are not available at the brush guys. No. <laughs> no. Using some of the orangey color from here, I'm just going to... Highlight that opening a little bit and push it up. Remember, I moved it all up, so I'm just going to push this opening up a little bit here. There we go. And there is kind of a bright pink highlight right here, so I'm going to get this kind of bright pinkish color. About all the areas that the light is hitting it. Okay. I still think this could be more yellow. I feel like I'm still not quite... I'm going to get the quinacridone magenta and the cadmium yellow. That's going to give me a much more intense orange. And I'm going to use that in here, too. A little bit of white. Some of that orangey color, dabbing that over. Quinacridone and cadmium. Maybe a little bit of the quinacridone burnt orange, but this is pretty intense color here. I'm just gonna add it in a few little places here. And I'm just setting my brush down and kind of lifting it pretty quickly. And if you get it too heavy or something, or I'm like, yeah, it's just not blendy enough, just use my paper towel there and kind of wipe it a little bit. Okay, then I'm going to get this bright, brighter yellow color, mix those two together. Use that right here for the top of that where it's sticking out and the open part of that lip right there and then it meets up with kind of where this one comes out. Alright, ok, 
Get a little bit of burnt umber here, mix that with this color. Use it right here, coming down, and then just kind of some dirty this up a little bit and dirty up the inside of this as it comes down slightly. And then the bottom of the shell. I still haven't done this inside part, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's do the bottom of the shell here. Get, I'm going to use the highlight color here. And so it's right in here. Get a little bit of blue down here in the shadow part of the shell. I'm going to use the blue as my shadow color. I'm going to wipe that out, get some of my highlight color. That white with a little bit of the yellow. Just trying to brush it in in one go so I don't have to blend over this multiple times. And then just kind of blending it into that wet blue paint. Okay, and then right here we got this really dark area. So I'm going to get my dark shadow. Thankfully, we still have some of it. And I'm going to put some of the shell in down there in that shadow color and then there's a little bit of it also right here that's kind of showing that's in that shadow it's just so dark you can't you can hardly see it in there but it is underneath these so i'm going to go ahead and do that first before i do anything more it goes it actually goes right up to this so it's kind of right in here, this underbelly of the shell. Really dark, and there's actually some gold in there, so it's probably catching the light through right here. So I'm putting some of that in there, okay. Make sure it's really dark. Should be close to the sand color. And I'm gonna go ahead and get some of that sand color and just kind of go over and it's striped too, so I'm gonna stripe in through it just a little bit. Okay, so there's our under part of our shell. So now we can put all the top part on it. And we'll be just about done. I'm gonna go. Before I do that though, I'm gonna grab my white. I'm just gonna. Touch a little bit of white highlights on some of these. little bits of the shell and I'm just using the very edge of this brush barely touching it down to get these little bits to come off
Ja, dat. Okay, now let's get these under undertones here. So this is the actually we can probably just use the unbleached titanium. Let's go ahead and put in this long sweeping one right here. Real dramatic. Right there. And then it goes darker underneath, so I'm gonna get a little bit of a darker color. Just use that. Maybe get some of the blue, use it in here. Oh, that's, that's that curl that goes right there. So there's a curve. It's not that dark, but there's a little curved area right there. I'm definitely going to have to work on this a little bit right there where that dark part comes out, but we're getting there. It's looking good. I like it. tones down in here. So it kind of turns in and just before it comes out this is all kind of orangey in here and then where it comes and flips out towards the towards the sun right here these are all kind of lighter. got his all his body kind of filled in so now it's just a matter of some fine-tuning go ahead and wipe all my chalk lines off just in case I have paints thick somewhere. I don't want to wipe it off. Okay. All right. Uh, <clears throat> get my burnt umber. I'm just kind of load it off to the side here. So it's just on one side. And I'm going to find my, I'm going to get a little bit of burnt sienna too. It's kind of a brown, brownish 
RG brown. Okay, so right across from where this comes in, just below it. So I kind of had it in the right place. I just need to put it back in. These are all pretty good, actually. just above these and mark out my highlights where they're sticking out above some of the spots. See how that makes it stick out? Do the same with this white here. Just kind of find the parts that are sticking out a little bit and I'm dapping with my white so that I'm creating these model lines that are kind of like those ribs that are sticking out on there. And I might glaze this if I if we have time at the end. I don't know if it's going to dry in time, but I kind of would like to glaze it just a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the rest of our foam and we'll splatter it and be done. So I'm going to get my... So glazing? Huh? I'm going to let that dry before I glaze oh. it. Okay. And can you kind of explain in detail about glazing when you do it, please? We got some new people. Right. Yes, I will. Because it's not the awesome kind that deals with Those donuts, donuts. <laughs> it's a more boring artist yeah. <laughs> version artist version of it yeah yeah kind of lame <laughs> but it's say so but it's, it's kinder on your on your waistline true for sure so <laughs> okay getting some white hair i added a little, little to the blue that we had that we used down here from before so it's still in there. I'm just going to tap and blend it in a circle to kind of just approximate that foam that's happening. I'm going to do another layer on here now that this is dry. And just going to keep it towards the top area there. Look how realistic it looks like. Isn't that cool? Like just looking at it, you know, it really does look pretty real. I like it. Um, but even with the, you know, with the, we can still get that realistic look with the more loose style, you know. So I'm going to pop some of this foam up, like splashing up to this, to the shell. And do some even brighter white, just on a few spots. Just 
Just still trying to keep it fairly, fairly blurry though, you know, because it's still fairly blurry, blurryly, blurry. <laughs> Not a word. Um, get some zinc white, white water here, and I'm gonna go ahead and splash. I want some splashy splash coming up. Even though it's probably not splashing because it's a sort of soft wave, I still want splash. We're just going to pretend like it's splashing. So we're just going to splash a little bit there. Why are you trying to hide that from me? <laughs> oh, no, I was trying not to get it on my main part of the shell. So. I know. <laughs> so a little splashy splash. And we can, you know, dab off of it. I, d I do want to kind of dab a little bit off some of that. Gotta but uh, okay. So this is this is dry enough. So what all we do when we're, we're glazing is just adding a thin layer of paint. That's all that means. It's just transparent. It's like a glazed donut. You you can still see the donut through it. The glaze is just the top, the coating. It changes the color. You can use use it to change the color. You can use it to darken your colors. Um, it's not as effective to highlight. Um, you really need, if you're highlighting something, a lot of times you need a lot of white in it. And white's not a great glazing color because it's got um, op opacifiers in it. It's 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 an opaque color. So it, it basically covers <laughs> other colors. So for glazes, you want to use colors that are transparent. So your transparent colors are, it shows on the back of your paint tubes um, a lot of times, but uh, your colors like, um, oh, well, not that one, obviously. Um, there we go. So here's our um, phthalo green. So it's slightly more opaque than than transparent but I still feel like it's transparent enough that you can use it for a glaze if you're all the way over here um you're you're pretty opaque so your cadmium yellows are opaque your um quinacridones are very are are well over into the transparent ranges usually burnt umber is going to be very opaque um, so, and then here's your quinacridone magenta, very, very transparent. So your transparent colors are going to be the best ones to use for glazes, um, because you can already see through them. So all you have to do is thin them out a little bit more and you can see through them even better. So, um, I'm going to just use a little bit of this color here, probably, uh, maybe a little bit of my blue. Let me see a little bit of the blue, maybe a little bit of this orangey color so here. can can you use zinc white to glaze with yes you can use zinc white to glaze with but um and and that's what we use when we do fog and things like that and that's why we use it for fog because you can still see through it um a little bit and that's what you know fog it it replicates okay. fog really well because of that all right so i'm just going to i got a little bit of this blue from our foam and a little bit of the brown in here i'm just going to glaze just up underneath right here and just up underneath right here. And that's just gonna poke those areas out. I don't wanna go into my highlight area with this. I just want a little bit of glaze kind of in my dark areas. And let's go ahead and darken up some of these areas of our shell that are coming down. And I think one of the really incredible examples of glazing was the uh, black and white leopard mm -hmm. that you did. Yeah. Right, because you you did it all black and white. Right. And then you glazed it, which you know turned it into like Colored. leopard colors. Right. And so that's a, that was a really good example. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's a that's a technique. I think I'm not sure exactly how you pronounce it. It's grisaille or grisaille, grisaille or, um, but basically you're um, you paint everything in black and white, and then you use your glaze to color it. It's an old fashioned. Um, technique that oil painters used for years so all right so now I've got my highlight color here my just white here and I'm just going back through and I'm just using this tip of this brush to kind of refine a little bit and do some stripes and things and we're about done wow so I'm pretty happy with this 15 minutes 
in a little bit of yellow, I'm going to glaze with some yellow. And this yellow, and I've got a little bit of the white in my brush too, but I'm not worried about it being opaque because I'm going over this color here. I'm not trying to cover anything. I'm just wanting to add a little bit of a glow to the inside of my shell right there. And then let's go ahead and add some glow on some of this part of my shell. Just anywhere that you want a little bit more of a yellow tint. See how pretty that is? Real easy. And the key is just not using a lot of paint. I don't have a lot of paint in my brush and I'm just very, very thin. That's all, that's all you need. And get some more of my white here. I'm just gonna use the white to make sure I have my highlights all worked out. Bright enough. Bleached titanium to it. There we go. So, do you want a disco? Sure. Oh yeah, we had somebody we missed. So, if you're watching on on Tuesday, we have some sort of a weird alternate universe happening where we had a second stream happening at the same time as our main stream and it's I don't know what happened but so we basically streamed twice on YouTube at the same simultaneously which I have no with the same video with the same video which I have no idea how that's even possible so um, half of our audience was watching <laughs> on a different a whole different show <laughs> And chatting, and, chatting, and yeah. somebody left a really do generous donation, and uh, we never mentioned it, so we're sorry, uh, but we didn't notice it until after the fact, and we realized, oh my gosh, we were streaming on two on a right. whole separate thing, so sorry, go ahead, Mark. So a shout out to Andrea for the Tuesday Super Chat yes. donation that happened in the alternate universe. Hopefully <laughs> the money doesn't go to the alternate universe. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But we really do appreciate that other that generous donation. And then today's Super Chatters were from Maggie. Uh, there was no special... Oh, wait. She says, just to say thank you. Oh, well, so thank, thank you, Maggie. you, Maggie. And then we had one from... And I'm going to butcher the name. I apologize. Apologize. It's Greth, I believe. G-R-E-T-H-E. -E. Greta, Maybe. Maybe. Hopefully somebody can give me the phonetic spelling oh, there or pronunciation. And then we had from Tanner just a moment ago. So thank you. Oh, wow. To thank everybody you guys. for Very the generous. wonderful donations. Super sweet. And well, of course, you know, as I always say, you can send small unmarked bills to the P.O. box down below. Don't this video. even know. You're going to get us in trouble. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Along with chocolate and jerky and okay. all that. Okay, chocolate, yes. <laughs> all right, I, I feel like the, the burnt umber there is a little bit too burnt umbery, so I'm going to just go back over this with just a little bit of burnt sienna here with a little bit of lighter color, and I'm just going to tone that down just a little bit. It, it's already in there, so I'm going to have to kind of go over it with some opaque color just to kind of it down just slightly because I think it's just a little bit too dark okay so that that helped and then I'm gonna grab my highlight color here and just kind of go over it too with that thin it out a little bit
Okay, there we go. Just softened it up a little bit. All right, there we go. There's our finished painting. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. This was really fun. What are you going to use to sign it? Oh, um, one thing I did want to do is go in here um, while I was glazing. I forgot to do this. Um, is glaze a little bit more of my shadow color in here just to just over the top of some of this sand. So I'm going to just use burnt umber and ultramarine blue here. And yeah, I need to I need to sign it too. Thank you. So So here in 2021, we're doing the beginners series. Beginner basics on yeah. Tuesday evening. So we've done two videos so far. And have been some great response, so we really appreciate that for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, so hopefully you'll join us for that. We're continuing that. And I'm just slowly going over all the techniques that, you know, you should know to help you with your painting. So, you know, um, I'm going to go ahead and do it down here, too. Just... Okay, see that? But see how that... Really, really dark. You, you without that really dark under there, it it wouldn't ground it. And it gives it a lot of drama. Really pretty. Um, let's sign it. Use my pen here. Oh yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna maybe blur this out, but I don't think it needs it. I, I kind of like it. What do you think? Do you think I need to blur it? I mean, I think it's fine the way yeah, it is. Yeah, I like it. I like it fine. So I'm just gonna leave it. To to be honest, I think the photo's a little unnatural. Right. Looking just you know the way that it is like that, but sure, I think what you've done is much better. Okay, well, thanks. That's <laughs> Mark just wants to go get snacks. That's all. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna glaze up here too. I noticed that there there's no shadow like this on this side, so let's do let's do a little bit of glazing right along here too. Just a little bit. And I'm gonna go back and forth over that whole thing and just kind of glaze that. See how that helps kind of ground it? I don't know if you remembered what it looked like before, but it definitely helps kind of make... There's always going to be like a little shadow where the where the surf hits the sand because it's just, you know, it's darker. All right, there we go. Fun stuff. Hope you enjoyed it. Let's uh, get out of here and we'll be back on what? Day is it? We'll, we'll be, be back, back on, on Tuesday. Tuesday. For our, yeah, for our first. Uh, this will be the fourth one. Third. Uh, no, fourth. We've oh, done sorry. three. Um, the chair was the third one. Uh, we did the frosty floral, the birds in the sunset sky, and then the chair. And oh, then we'll be doing the right. the uh, the pink flower. Um, so that'll be a good lesson for our beginner basic series on Tuesday. So hope you join us for that. All right, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.